All right. So today we are going to talk about um, constraints and relationships in a relational database. And we are going to um, also build a little schema um, uh, just to, to practice building schemas and, and using uh, Postgres. So just as a, a recap of yesterday a little bit, um, so why do we need databases? Um, can someone give me a, an idea, just any thoughts on that? Why would we need to use databases? For persistent data. Okay. And what does persistence really mean? Uh, just means that it's going to be saved and stored and accessed later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, so databases are very important for storing application data um, and it's typically like between sessions just to have it saved somewhere else um, so you can access it whenever. Um, it also allows us to share application data or sh share data, sorry, between applications. Um, so you can have multiple applications taking from the same pool of data. Um, what else, any other ideas? Isn't it like faster to access that data? It is, yeah. Um, the way that uh, the the tables are structured, or the way that the data is structured into tables, and um, the the query language allows us to access um, and update large amounts of data um, more efficiently, for sure. Um, what else? I, I think it's probably secondary, but you know, it gives you some degree of ownership over that data if the database is yours, as opposed to having it just contract out and consume it from somebody else. Yeah, and a lot of relational database management systems um, like Postgres allow you to have roles um, and only specific roles have specific rights to read slash um, write data and stuff like that. Um, Josh, you're saying to avoid Excel spreadsheets. Yes, actually, um, I think, yeah, I, I think um, it, like Excel spreadsheets model pretty closely to how tables are are um, structured. So yeah, definitely it uh, it replaces it. Um, keeping data organized, yes. Uh, as the data get large, uh, using a database is easier to access and update data. Yeah, you're right, Jody um, and Johnny. Um, but yeah, also, so not only with the user roles, it allows you to have better data security. Um, you can also have better data integrity. So making sure, uh, so when you are inserting data, you can have certain, um, not when you're inserting, but when you're creating these database tables um, and your schema, you can set certain uh, checks to make sure that your data that is going in is only the data that you want to go in. So if you have constraints that are on your tables, you have certain rules, um, those will keep the data integrity. It'll make sure that, um, actually, well, data integrity means like data, I think like data stays the same um, and doesn't get modified. Um, but also it allows you to, um, what is it called? To make sure that the data that is going in to the database is checked and it is in the format that you want it to be. Um, so when you're when you're designing a database table or sorry, a database schema, um, our design goals should be um, organizing our data into sensible tables. So something that makes sense, um, making our data easy to access. So let me actually write this down. Schema design goals. So we want to organize data into tables. We want to make data easy to access. We also want to be able to 
model proper data relationships. So we are not only creating the shape of the data, which is the tables, um, we are also setting relationships between these tables. Uh, for data relationships. And also we want, it allows us, or we would want to reduce duplicate data and redundancies as much as we can. Um, yeah, data redundancies. Um, yeah, so that's what that's what we usually want when we're trying to um, design our schema. Um, and some steps that we can take for this. Um, first of all, think about your design. So think about what are your chunks of data. So these are typically called entities. Um, what is your entity that you're trying to capture? So I think yesterday you guys saw the example of um, like a school type system where you have a student entity and you have an address entity and you have, um, remind me what else, uh, I think like course. So these are all entities and then you can model your relationships between them. So, so first of all, you should think about your design, try to draw it out. Um, having like drawing things out in computer science are, is very important. Um, what no matter where you are designing, so whether you're designing stuff for the front end or the back end systems, um, or the database schemas, um, drawing things out really really helps. Um, so yeah, think about your design, create your entities, and then you can create your relationships. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any any questions um, about about this or thoughts? Okay. <clears throat> so when we are designing our schema, um, there are a few different types of constraints that we can set on our tables when we're creating them. Um, and when I talk, when I say schema, I just mean the um, the way that the tables are designed. So if I, yeah, so th that's where we create like create table and specify the um, the, the columns and and all that stuff. So on each data item on each column, we can put um, a bunch of different constraints. Um, some of the most important ones that we will see today are primary key. So primary key is, can someone tell me what it is? It doesn't change, it's unique. Well, it's, it's unique. Yeah, so must be unique. And what is what is its purpose? It references another entry, I think. It's like uh, the only one of that entity. Like there's no other key like that, and it references one thing, and it <laughs> sort of follows it into every entity, like an ID. Yeah. So basically, a primary key is the main key that we can identify um, a, a table row. So uh, we have a table, there's a bunch of data in it. Um, each row, each entry of that data should have a primary key that is unique. Um, that way we can easily identify um, a row by, by a, unique, um, a, a unique key, pretty much. So must be unique uh, is used to, um, or is used as the main identifier. Um, or a table. So primary keys can be um, 
can be just an integer. So we've seen them in, in the form of an ID. So we can create an ID for each entry. Um, and that must be unique when it's a primary key. Primary keys could also be any other data type. It could be a string. It could be um, an int. It could be, I don't know. There's, <laughs> I don't know what other data types that we can use to, to make a unique thing, but um, they can be anything. The primary key just has to be unique per entry in that table um, because it is used to identify the, the data. Um, another one that we will see is uh, a unique key uh, or a unique constraint. So um, unique just enforces uniqueness. So basically, if I'm creating, um, so let's say here I'm creating a uh, what kind of, let's say we have a student table. So I'm actually going to create a new file. Um, let me call this constraint. Example.sql. So, Create table. I'm going to call this students. Um, let me remember if I needed to put. Yeah, I do need the parentheses. Oops. So if I want to create a, a table students, I can add an ID. Um, so when you're creating an ID, um, you can either do just an int and then primary key. So this is how you set your constraints. You basically can put the constraints after your definition of the of the field. So within students, we have an ID field, and that will be of type int. Um, a nice thing that uh, Postgres gives us is something called serial. So serial is a type, uh, is a data type, and it is used for IDs. So if you have an ID type serial, it will automatically create uh, your IDs for you. So when you're inserting records, you don't actually have to provide an ID. It'll start from, I think it'll start from one, or it'll start from a certain or a zero, um, and then it'll keep incrementing. Um, so, oh, thank you, Daniel. Yeah, it starts from zero and it starts incrementing one by one. Um, and you don't have to really keep track of uh, making sure that you have unique IDs. You can just use the serial keyword and uh, or the serial type, and that will enforce um, the, the, the sequencing of IDs. Um, I think in other SQL type languages, uh, it's it's, it's actually called sequence maybe or something like that. Um, but yeah, so when you're creating a primary key, uh, you can you can use any type. I can make an int. I will create serial one. Um, and then you add your constraints afterwards. So this one is going to be a primary key. I can create a first. First name, um, varchar is another type. Did you guys see yesterday the, um, like all the different data types that are allowed in Postgres? No, there's a table, a few, okay. So this is actually a very good point to go to the Postgres docs. So if you just go to postgresql.org, um, and you can go to documentation up here. Um, you can just say view the manual and it'll take you to the latest one. Um, so the tutorial is pretty cool. Um, it gives you kind of like an overview of the SQL languages or the SQL language 
um, how to create a table, populating a table with rows, querying, joins, um, aggregate functions, updates, and deletions. Um, so this is pretty a pretty comprehensive good guide. Um, if I go home, let's see. Um, what did I want to look up? So let's say I don't know where to find something. I'll just look up here. I'm looking for data types. Their, their documentation is not that queryable. So let's go back home. Um, I'm data definition, probably. Hold on. SQL syntax. I should have. Data types, there it is. Okay, so on the, yeah, it's just data type.html. Um, okay, so yeah, these are, this is a list of all the data types. I'm gonna put this in the chat. If anyone's interested, um, but yeah, these are all the data types that you can put in. We see here um, Boolean that we've seen before, character, character varying. So varchar is a pretty um, a pretty common one that we use, variable length character string. Um, if we just use char, it's a fixed length character string. So I, I think if you are... Um, if you are wanting to, let's say, collect zip codes and you only want like five, like the five uh, digit zip code, you might want to make it um, a character string with five. Um, let's see what else we can find. Serial, like we said, this is uh, auto incrementing integer. Um, there's a smaller one. If if you will ever want to use it, but there's no there's no real reason to right now. Um, text is just variable length, uh, variable length uh, character string. So this is typically used for longer text. Um, I don't think it has a, a limit. Um, text, I guess length limit, yeah. Okay, so the maximum is is sixty five thousand bytes, which is quite a bit. So um, it's used to keep the character of infinite length. Um, so yeah, it it has quite a bit of of space. Um, yeah, you can you also have time. You have timestamp. Um, these are these are pretty important too. Um, but yeah. Just wanted to show those. Um, and then we can also see the documentation for constraints, which I saw it earlier. Um, is this is set constraint. These are commands. This is not what I'm looking for. This is a good exercise in how to parse documentation. Um, because when you're actually going to be working, if you are going to be working with SQL, um, the documentation is, is where you will find most of your information. Um, so earlier I was looking for data definition and then I found constraints over here. So basically data definition is how you're defining your tables and stuff like that. So table basics, you can create a table like this. You can drop a table. Um, you can also set default values if you want when you're creating um, attributes. So here you can set default, you can set serial. Okay, um, I just wanted to show you guys constraints. So here are some of the constraints. Um, 
these are the constraints that are available. We are going to um, look at the primary keys and how to set them. So primary key constraint indicates that a column or group of columns can be used as a unique identifier, um, like we said. And this requires that the value be both unique and not null. So in primary keys, it has to be unique and not null. Um, but if you just set primary key, you don't need to really set those. It's, it's implied. So primary key sets the constraint of both unique and not null. Um, you can also use multiple. Um, multiple columns to be a primary key. So let's say you have, um, and we'll see this in a bit, you have like uh, an enrollments table. So enrollments has uh, a student and a course and students can have many courses and courses can have many students. So the combination of student and course should be unique because a student can only take one course at a time, let's say, um, or like the same course once. So you can set multiple primary keys for, um, for a table. So if we go back here, this is my primary key. Um, if I didn't wanna specify it here, I could specify it at the end as well. So this is 255. Um, so it should be primary key. And then I can put what attributes I want to be the primary key or what um, columns pretty much. So this is two different syntaxes. So you can put it here or you can put primary key up here. Um, any questions on primary key? So yeah, um, so primary key uses main identifier and not be null. All right, um, before, actually, yeah, we already talked about unique, so it just enforces uniqueness. Let's say in here, um, we want last names and first names to be unique. So bar char five. Um, so I could either say that this is unique unique. And this is unique. So this sets a unique constraint that the first name has to be unique. Unique. Also, the last name has to be unique. Um, but this won't check that the combination of them will be unique. So basically, I can have um, someone named first name Bob, last name Saget. I don't know. <laughs> um, and I can't have another person with a Bob name or a Saget name, which I guess enforces that only one person will have this, um, this unique combination. Um, if I didn't want to set it on each of them, similar to the primary key, I can say unique, and then I could specify um, I like doing it with a capital. It doesn't matter. Um, SQL doesn't really care about um, like the capital versus not capital in, in the queries. Um, I think it's just become a convention where anything that is a keyword um, that does something in SQL, you will do it in capital letters and then everything else is, is lowercase. Um, so if I wanted to set a unique constraint on the first and last name, so only one person in our students table can have that combination of first and last name, then I could just add them here. So first name, last name, and that enforces a unique constraint. 
Um, the third constraint that we are going to talk about is going to be foreign key. You guys saw this a little bit yesterday. Um, so for a foreign key, uh, who can tell me what a foreign key is? Or who can remember from yesterday? Uh, it's a unique key that relates to a different uh, table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is, uh, wait, did you say unique? Yes. Or, okay. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily have to be unique. Um, you can make it so if you add the unique constraint, but um, for a foreign key, you can have, um, I guess the reference is going to be unique. like, it, it's only going to refer to that one ID, basically. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see an example of, of the uniqueness versus not. But for foreign keys, this go is going to be establishing um, a column whose value references a primary key of another table. Um, and sometimes you can set it where it's just referencing another column, another, another table, but it's typically used to reference another primary key. So like yesterday we were saying, um, students have addresses and in the student table, you can have an address column that holds the um, uh, holds a, a a foreign key to the ID of the addresses table. So that allows us to pretty much reference um, reference things. So. Um, This establishes columns. Whose value references. A primary key in another table. Um, so this is typically how it's used rarely, um, but it can happen. You can reference something in the same table, but I personally haven't seen that in um, in an actual database implementation. Um, and foreign keys can be null. By default, um, they're allowed to be null, um, and this is basically called an orphaned record. So it doesn't have anything that it's really attached to. Um, okay, so the way that we can actually create a foreign key, so let's say students um, had, maybe not the students. Let's say we have a, oh yeah, with the students. So we can create a table, um, that holds addresses. We can keep an ID like this. Um, let's say this is just uh, address line. Um, I'm going to make this text. Actually, bar chart should be fine. Bar chart. Um, don't want to set uniqueness. And let's say I want to add a, a foreign key that attaches a student to an address. Um, how might I do that? Where, which table goes, uh, does the foreign key go into? If I want to reference an address um, that belongs to a student. In the, in the addresses? In the addresses you're saying? Yeah. So can an address um, have multiple students attached to it? So let's say they're siblings that are students and they both live at the, at the same address. So if you had um, two siblings, so two students living at the same address, would you want to hold on to like student ID? So saying like 
each address will only have a, one student that we can attach it to? Or would we want maybe each student to have an address that, they're, that they have attached to them? So which is, which is more correct? The having in the students. In the student, yeah. I think so too. Um, so basically, um, each student can only have one address versus addresses can be shared amongst many students. So we will want to put uh, the foreign key part of the relationship in, in the table that has um, the need for one of these things. So like basically a student can only have one address. Um, so we would put it in the students table versus addresses can be shared with many students. Um, and we'll talk about relationships in a bit, but this is this is part of the relationship. Um, but this is one type of relationship called a one-to-many relationship. So there is um, one address to many students, basically. Um, okay, so student has an address ID. And the way I could say that this address ID references this table. Um, I, I literally just have to say address ID. I have to say what type it is. So I'm going to go with integer right now. Um, and address ID integer references. Ref. Yeah. So Address ID references addresses table. Um, and I can specify which column it's actually going to uh, link to. So in this case, what would the column be? Column one. What, what, which name? What's the name of the column? Should be address ID or something, ID? Yeah, ID. So basically, um, address ID is the name inside of the student uh, table that we're going to give it. Um, but this address ID will hold a an integer, and that integer will reference something from the addresses table. And the link between the two, so the link between this address ID and this addresses table is go or this student and this addresses table is going to be address ID to ID. So the ID is the one that we are making the link to. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll show it with, with a diagram in a bit. Um, I think it'll make a little more sense. Um, but yeah, so this is, this is one way of creating um, a foreign key. This is probably the easiest way. Um, and then we'll see a little later on if we had created our table and then we wanted to add these foreign keys later on, how, how might we do that? We would have to alter the table instead of having to drop it and, and recreate it every time. Um, yeah, any questions about, about the three types of constraints? For uh, primary keys, foreign keys, and unique keys. So just to make sure you're able to update an already created table later on with mm -hmm. a, a new column that can be used now as a primary key or as a foreign key or however you want to make it. Yeah, you can you can alter, um, I think, anything as long as it. So when you're altering things, if there are records that already exist that contradict with the data, you have to like update those records to allow the change. But yes, you should you should be able to change almost everything. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, bad practice, but capability is there. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay, so um, these are the 
main constraints that allow us to build relationships um, in uh, in our schemas. Um, there are a few that, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. There are a, a few other ones, so not null. What, what does not null do? Enforces the, uh, the data cannot be blank or null. Yeah, exactly. Enforces um, that the column cannot be null. Um, let's go back to the documentation real quick. Um, so yeah, like we said, not null constraints. Um, you just add it to uh, any column. Um, and you can also set certain ones to be null. So um, you can just remove the not keyword and then that me that enforces the fact that this column can be null. It, it is allowed to be null. Um, another one that you you might see, it's it's kind of cool to use um, is a check constraint. So when you're creating your table, you can allow, um, you can add a constraint where it checks if what is going in, into the database is matching a certain constraint. So here in this products table that's created, there's a price, um, a price column. And on this price column, there is a check that checks to, to make sure that the price is greater than zero. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it's as easy as that. Um, yeah, you could also name constraints, which we'll see in a bit. So when we're creating a constraint, you can give it a name. So here constraint, and then it gives it a name. Um, and then you can just add whatever afterwards. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it about constraints. We talked about unique constraints, exclusion constraints. Um, I haven't personally used it, but exclusion constraints uh, ensure that if any two rows are compared on specific, the specified columns um, or expressions using the specified operators, at least one of these operator comparisons will return false or null. Um, yeah, this this is a little too into the into the weeds for for um, for our uses right now. Um, yeah, any other any questions about constraints in general? Um, can you guys explain one more time uh, what is like unique saying about? Yeah, so unique says that this, uh, so, okay, let's look at this one. So in this products table, there's a product number and it has the unique constraint. So what this means is when you're inserting the re records, the product number can only appear once in a table. So let's say um, the first product has a product number one, second product has a product number two, um, and then you're in, trying to insert a third product with a product number one, it's going to give you an error because the product number is supposed to be unique. It's supposed to only happen once in that table. Um, does, that, does that make sense? Um, yes, but what is the difference between the upper one and the below one? Um, it's the same thing. So you can write it in, in two different ways. You can either set, so with all these constraints, you can either set the constraint on the same line that you're defining um, the, the column, or you can set it at the bottom. So you can just say there's a unique constraint. So after you, you define all your, your um, your columns, you can set unique. And then within the parentheses, you can put all the column names that that constraint is supposed to apply to. So instead of if I had, if I wanted all of these to be unique, instead of me putting unique on every single line, I can just put unique here and then put um, 
all of the, the, the column names separated by commas. Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. Of course. Yeah, so similar to here. Um, yeah, so A and B, or sorry, A and C needed to be unique. So we put unique with A and C. Um, yeah, other questions? Someone else was going to say something. I was going to, but I think I'm sure we're going to cover it later. I was wondering, because um, I assume we're going to be interacting with these databases via code, not directly in the terminal. Um, and so when we try and add data that is excluded by these constraints mm -hmm. and it gives an error, how it returns that error back to us so we know yeah. how to handle it. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see some examples of that and we'll try to create um, errors on purpose to, to also see those. Oh, I won't have to try. It was happen. Yeah, we're not going to have to try hard. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, uh, any other questions about constraints? Okay. Awesome. So uh, I'll just add the check to um, to this list. And I will add also the link to the docs that we were at, just so you guys um, see them here. Okay, so now that we talked about constraints and what kind of constraints we can add to, uh, to columns, Let's talk about relationships. So how can we model um, different types of relationships between these entities? Um, so there are three different types of relationships. So we have one-to-one. -one. One to many. And we also have many too many. So who can tell me what a one-to-one -one relationship is? That's like with the uh, foreign key pointing to a primary key of another table situation. Um, okay, but so without, without thinking about what exactly has to happen, like using like what constraints we use, um, just a relationship between two objects or two things. How, what kind of relationship is a one-to-one -one relationship? One thing matches up to only one other thing. Yes, exactly. So basically um, these relationships, I should say, um, happen between um, data from from two tables so um between two tables so um or two entities that would be that sounds better so <clears throat> basically a one-to-one -one relationship is a relationship where at most one record from table a can be referenced by uh another record from table b so um, an example of this could be uh, if you're if you're designing a school system and a student can only have one locker and one locker can only belong to one student, that is called a one-to-one -one relationship. Basically, each record, each unique locker can only belong to a unique student. Um, so that's what a one-to-one -one relationship. So, one, um, one record from table A can reference, um, can only reference one record from table B. 
Um, so this is usually, uh, yeah, this is usually a rare relationship to find in a lot of database models. So not a lot of things are are one to one. It's a lot of times one to many relationships are are um, created. Um, so there are two ways to achieve this. So one way can be done, um, or one way to achieve this is using a primary key. plus a foreign key. And another one would be to use, um, so a primary key from one table with a foreign key from another, um, or a foreign key, foreign key, and a unique key. And we'll we'll demonstrate these ones right after we talk about this. So we'll just um, kind of walk through them, and then we will see examples. Um, okay, what about one to many? Based on what we know from one to one. One thing relates to multiple things. Yeah. Definitely. So one record from table A can reference um, one or more records can be referenced by one or more records um, from table. B. So this is what we were talking about when we were uh, building this students and addresses. So one, one record from table A, so addresses is table A, let's say. So one record from here can be referenced by one student or many students. So students will have um, foreign key, so this is how we built it. We put a foreign key on the many side. So on the table that can have multiple, uh, or can, uh, uh, yeah, the one to many is, is a little hard if you don't, if you're not drawing it out. Um, but basically one record from table A can be referenced by one or more records from table B. Um, and so this is achieved by um, creating a foreign key in table B. To reference the primary key in table A. Okay, and then Last, we have a many-to-many -many relationship. So this is where, again, based on the, the ones before, um, this is where a record from table A may be associated with one or many records from table B and the opposite as well. So table B will be referenced um, by, can be referenced by many records um, in table A. So. Many records in table B may reference many records in table A. So an example of this would be students and courses. So um, through a student's career, they, sh they are allowed to take um, many courses and um, each course can be taken by many students. So those that entity relationship is a many to many. So typically the way you achieve this is you have to create a table called a join table. It's just a regular table that models this relationship. So here you can't just use constraints. You actually have to create a third table that will hold the references to, to two, to the two of them. 
So um, with many to many, create a join table um, that has references to both tables. A and B. Um, questions on, on this? I know we didn't really um, see an example yet, but conceptually. Okay, so Let's start with building an example. Um, so with this, let's say our example is um, building like a, a, a mock, uh, or not a mock, but um, a, what's the word? <laughs> um, a copycat of Facebook or some, or some sort of social media. Um, so a one-to-one -one example could be um, if we had, a user and a profile. So let's say a user account. Um, let's say in our imaginary data uh, data schema that we're actually going to build in a, in a bit, um, we have a user account entity and a profile entity. The one-to-one -one relationship would be that one user account has one profile. Um, an example of uh, a one-to-many relationship could be that um, a user can have uh, multiple posts. So that makes sense. So each user can have multiple posts, um, but then each post was only created by one user. So that's why it's a one-to-many relationship. A single singular user can have many posts. Um, and an example of a one-to-many relationship, or sorry, a many-to-many -many relationship would be, um, what is it called? Posts. So let's say posts have reactions. So those little emojis, um, but they can like do a plus or like a, a like or something like that. So, um, Posts have reactions, um, or they have many reactions. And reactions themselves can be used on many posts. So let's say our reactions table holds, um, each record holds like a type of reaction. So a like, uh, like a heart, sad face, angry, something like that. Um, so a post can have many reactions and those reactions can be used on many different posts. So that would be a many to many relationship. And um, we'll, we'll take a break. And then when we, when we come back, we'll actually start designing our schema on, on this example. And um, we'll, we'll create some tables and actually see it in, in SQL. Any questions before we take a break? I'm going to pause this. 